Welcome. Welcome to Biomedia United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Nan Nelson, pastor. We're so happy you're with us today. Will you pray with me? Gracious Lord, we thank you for this time to be in your presence to worship you. This time to hear your word read, to hear your word proclaimed, and to be in holy fellowship with you and one another in this space. Be with us now as we worship together. Amen. For this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If you have a praise or a prayer request, a prayer concern, we'd love for you to share them with us so that we can celebrate your praises, your joys, and, and pray with you for whatever is on your heart. You may send us a request on our YouTube channel, Biomeda United Methodist Church, or our Facebook page, Biomeda UMC. And you can email us at our email address, Biomeda United Methodist Church at arumc.org. Biomeda is spelled B A Y O U M E T O. As it is our tradition, we will begin with a call to worship from the book of Psalms. Today, we'll, I'll be reading from Psalm 30, verses 1 through 7. If you take out your Bibles, you may follow along. The book of Psalms is found in the Old Testament of your Bible, and Psalms is about halfway through the middle of your Bible, not quite. And Psalm 30, verses 1 through 7, I'll begin reading in verse 1. I will exalt you, Lord, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Lord, my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. You, Lord, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the pit. Sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his love and favor last a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Another tradition we have in our virtual service at Biomedia United Methodist Church is a time of silent prayer after which I will pray. And then I'll invite you to share in reciting the Lord's Prayer along with me. Let us bow now in silence. How great thou art, O God, how great thou art. You love us unconditionally, invitationally, and transformationally. You love us no matter what we've done or what we may ever do or have left undone. You love us with your unconditional love always. You love us invitational. For your son Jesus invites us to follow him and to learn how to live in relationship with you. And when we accept that invitation, our relationship with you deepens and we grow to be more like you through your transformational love. And we thank you for loving us so much that you gave your only son Jesus who came to earth to teach us how to live in relationship with you who gave his life on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, and who you raised on the third day after he was crucified, dead, and buried, giving us eternal life with you. And we are forever grateful and thankful for all you have done and do for us still today. Lord, there's so much going on in our world, in the United States and around the world, in the United States, there's violence, there's domestic violence, there's random violence, violence that no one knows why it happens.
there are accidents, there's storms of all kinds. There's wildfires, there's tornadoes, there's flooding and blizzards and hurricane season is coming soon. And Lord, we just ask that you protect us from all these. And we pray that peace comes in our time, in our lives, and that the war, the war in between Ukraine and Russia ceases. And that the leaders who want war will find you, that someone you place in their path will lead them to you and stop the war and bring peace. Lord, we lift up those who step into harm's way, the military, the law enforcers, the firefighters, the first responders, and yes, Lord, all of healthcare personnel who continue to care for all of us who are sick or in accidents or whatever illness we have, whether it's the COVID virus or some other illness, we give thanks for those who care for us. And Lord, we give thanks to you for loving us and keeping us safe. And so we entrust our concerns to you, the names on our prayer list, the names in our hearts that we share only with you and entrust them to your care as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the New Testament, from the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter, verses 11 through 18. You may take out your Bibles again and follow along with me in the New Testament, the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. This is about the Good Shepherd. In verse 11, beginning there, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs for cover. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not at this sheep tent. I must bring them in too also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The season my father, the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. This is the word of God for the peace of people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me again? O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Skipping. Do you remember skipping? Do you, who likes to skip? I used to skip. Who wishes they could skip again now? Well, Stella was four years old. And she was sitting on the floor in front of her closet with a pile of shoes just all over. And she'd try on one and toss it and it did if it didn't meet her qualifications. And her mother, Gwen, asked Stella, what on earth are you doing? I can just hear a mother saying that. And Stella said, I'm finding the right shoes. Just pick some. It's time to go, her mother replied. Mommy, I need to find the best pair for skipping. Oh, that's a new one. 
One Sunday after church, Stella flung off her shoes as soon as they walked in the front door and told her mommy to throw them away because they were like tigers. And her mom gave her a puzzled look and, and Stella continued and explained how those shoes bite and claw her feet. Those shoes are never more. Skipping shoes, skipping shoes. My shoe philosophy is similar to Stella's. If they don't fit, get rid of them. But more practical, because shoes must fit, be comfortable and match what I'm wearing. Well, sort of. I've never considered which shoes are better for skipping, but maybe I should because I would imagine that Stella knew that skipping shoes were the most comfortable ones that she had. So why was she searching for shoes? They were going to the grocery store. No exact plans for skipping, but Stella's shoe choice reflected general outlook for the day. Think about it. She didn't know and couldn't control what was going to be on her schedule that day, but she was planning on skipping somewhere along the day. Wouldn't it be wonderful if all of us could have an outlook more like that to plan for skipping something we love to do, something that's fun? And wouldn't it be more a better outlook if we were able to reflect that trust in Jesus when he says, I came to give life in all its fullness, John 10, 10. If Jesus's purpose would for us was for us to be abundance, we need to plan more joy. No matter what each day brings, we need to plan more joy into each day of our lives. Jesus is the good shepherd and he laid down his life for us on the cross. And he knows your name. He knows all our names. He knows my name. And he knows everything about us. Everything about you. Everything about me. Think about it. We believers listen to him and follow him just like sheep follow their shepherd. And then there are those who, as John tells us, belong to another fold or another sheep pen. The nuns, those who don't want anything to do with Jesus. The duns who have been there, done that, they're tired and they want to rest. And the non-believers and the backslid. But Jesus wants all of these, the nuns, the duns, the non-believers and the backslid, to be part of one flock, a community of believers, one body of Christ for the one true God. Jesus must bring all of those together, the nuns, the duns, the unbelievers, and the backslid. The believers and the ones in another fold, he wants to bring together in one community so that all will listen to his voice. Jesus said, for this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life to take it up again. No one takes it from me. I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. Jesus wants all of us to live abundantly every day of our lives. If we need skipping shoes or whatever we may need, we can learn from Stella to plan to have more joy each day in our lives. We may not be planning and testing to see if our shoes are right for skipping, but we can plan for something in each of our days that brings us joy during daily living. Perhaps that joy is sitting in the sunshine, drinking an ice cold glass of lemonade or a cup of hot chocolate, smiling at someone to know we care, indulging in a chocolate fudge brownie or whatever brings us joy during life's daily struggles. 
We need to plan that joy in our lives every day. Jesus wants us to live a joyful, faithful, abundant life, trusting him. Author Cynthia Rukti said that after church one Sunday, she and her husband were surrounded by other church members at the same small but charming little restaurant. Three young adult couples sat at the table behind them. A high top table of high school boys were beside them, and an elderly couple sat several tables away. Cynthia and her husband had greeted each group on the way to their table, common courtesy undergirded with genuine love for one another. And midway through their meal, the high school boys seemed to pay special attention to them, smiling broadly every time they looked their way. Cynthia and her husband smiled back, grateful for their exuberance and young faith. She had worked with several of them in a recent fine arts competition, so she assumed the extra confirmation might have, might have fueled their interest. They didn't really know why. When the young man engaged in deeper conversation with one another, a man from another table behind them came near, and he whispered, these young men think that you paid for their meals. Let's let them think that. I don't want them to know that I did. Just keep smiling, okay? What a kind gesture on the man's part. He wanted to bless the boys, but he didn't want any credit for it. A double blessing, a double blessing. He deepened the connection between those high school boys and Cynthia and her husband, she thought. And when the time is right, we'll tell them the truth so they can thank the giver and develop their own habits of invisible generosity. Friends, it's that kind of selfless, obvious generosity that Jesus shows us in everything that he does and has done for us, offering us not a survivable life, but an abundant life, one that is filled with kindness because that is what makes it abundant. Take a faith step today. Engage in drive-by anonymous kindness today. Do it each day, adding joy to your day and others living abundantly. Will you pray with me? Loving God, may we make the most of every opportunity to share your gift of love by our actions and words if necessary. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to take a faith step today. Invite Jesus into your heart and life for the first time, or maybe for a second, third, or hundredth time. Invite him back in. Come, have a little talk with Jesus, and invite him back into your lives. Receive the benediction. Go from this place with invisible generosity and kindness sharing the love of God and life in Jesus Christ with those you meet. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. We hope that you take that step of faith and come to Jesus. You can find us here on Sunday mornings at 12 a.m. on YouTube channel, Bayou Media United Methodist Church, our Facebook page, Bayou Media UMC. And on Thursdays, beginning the first week of May. Hope and Prayer for Our World will be back on Thursdays, opening at 12 a.m. on YouTube channel, Biomedia United Methodist Church, and Facebook page, Biomedia UMC. Until we meet again, may God bless you.